So, Sergio, can you kind of walk us through how this all came together, uh, you know, over the past few days? Uh, well, I mean, it really only took one phone call. Uh, one of those, I was down in, I'll be honest, I was down in Mexico playing with, practicing with my team that I, that I you know, that have my rights out there, the Aceleros of Monclova. I was out there, I mean, I'm 39, so it's not like I could get off, just jump off the couch, you know, like before. And, <laughs> you know, so I had to take advantage of the opportunity. I had to at least be somewhat ready just in case I did get a phone call. And I, I had gotten phone calls, you know, with interest, but, you know, interest is just a phone call. Hey, we think you're cool. Okay, cool. That's what's up. You know, thank you for calling. But the, this was the first team that really, you know, put an offer on the table and uh, understand, you know, that there's things that happened prior to that, you know, with Casey getting hurt. And uh, that's probably the, the real push that they needed to you know, offer me something, but it only really took one phone call. As soon as, you know, Jerry said, hey, we want you, this is what we can give you. I was just like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, West Coast, and on a team that has a legitimate shot to win, you know, that's that's expecting to win. That's, I mean, I mean what more can I ask for being a West Coast guy? And uh, at this stage of my career, that's honest, there's only a couple of things that are left. Uh, enjoy my time, my teammates, you know, how, how much time I have left playing, you know, uh, in the league and uh, and to win, uh, and I'm I'm getting that opportunity here. Uh, I couldn't be any more happier, to be honest. Uh, I got a lot of family uh, in Washington as well, so uh, I'm I'm excited for this. I really, really am. So you you pitched for the A's last year. You watched this team. Mm -hmm. and, and you guys had some battles there. What what are you, what were you losing? Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. was a little rough there. It was like what 12, 13 in a row. Something yeah. Like that. yeah. I remember that. But what were your impressions when you when you saw this team? They they were pretty scrappy. They played really hard. You guys had some, you know, the, the games were kind of crazy. Um, well, that's that. that's that's one of the things that kind of stood out uh, that has stood out about the Mariners to me the last couple of years is, you know, their resiliency. Uh, they got a lot of fight in them. You know, young guys trying to prove themselves, trying to establish themselves, but yet prove themselves as men also and. Uh, it's it's impressive. It was impressive to watch because it was never an easy, never an easy task. Uh, I mean, I think, like I said, it was like 12 or 13 in a row or something like that. They just just couldn't beat them, and you get frustrated after a while. But then, you know, what's the saying goes, you can't beat them, join them. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's kind of where I'm here. You know, it, it, they earn my respects by the way they play. They don't gotta say much, and they don't. They just play, and uh, it's kind of my style. It's kind of you know, the way I, I kind of feel I've approached myself is all I got is, you know, my word and the balls, you know, and, and this is kind of what these young bucks are doing themselves and, and the way they're establishing themselves, the way they're playing. And then they even got pieces, younger pieces that are still coming. It's, it's, it's exciting to be a part of it now. Uh, I want to win. And so do they. So it seems like a pretty good fit. What can you teach him about winning? You've done it. You've done it before. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because this a lot of guys in there have never won anything. Um, it's not necessarily teaching them how to win. It's just teaching them how to be themselves, to give themselves the best opportunity to present their best. Um, I'm, I'm real big on self-respect, uh, self-knowledge, um, being able to tell yourself the truth. You know, on how the outcomes of the games or what, maybe the way you're thinking, the way you're feeling, and what actions you took in terms of preparation, and then you know, aftermath and how you accept and, and, and literally learn from the day before if it's a good or bad day, you know? Uh, a lot of that too is being able to tell themselves the truth if they're applying themselves in the correct manner or not. Um, I'm real big on uh, the terminology is, who's that Indian with them big league arrows? Mm -hmm. So it's not questioning if these kids can play or that young bucks can play or they can win. It's questioning you know, who the guy is that's going through that, who's the guy with those arrows that belong here that are showing that they can be competitive at this level. Uh, so a lot of it is, you know, they can figure like self-identity, like who are you? Um, that way they can they can tell, what, you know, what their best looks like. Um, I can tell you what my best looks like, you know? And uh, I think if, if I can just show that on a consistent basis on who I am and how to be myself every day. I think that that would be key to winning in general. You know, who who are you here? What you bring to the table? How you add, how you help out? You know, what you add? You know, instead of subtract. It's 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 it's. I know it's a different mindset. It's a different. You know, maybe not heard of it a whole lot, but that's just kind of what's helped me out through my career. It's 
being myself. Uh, I'm nobody else but me. And it, I go out and if I can just be that every day, then it presents its own value. They can find a place for me anywhere if they know what's coming their way. So here I am, season 15, and again, I'm not saying if they follow me or they do exactly all that, we're guaranteed to win or not. No, but I, I do feel that it does give us a good shot to win on a daily basis. How did you get there? How does all of that apply to you? <laughs> you don't see many season 15 relievers, <laughs> and there's been a lot of transition with you. Um, guys like Javi Lopez, uh, Javier Lopez, I had him in my corner. Guys like Jeremy Affelt, uh, Tim Hudson, Matt Cain, Jake Peavy, uh, guys that it's the way they played, it's the way they carried themselves. There were, there was the, the way they challenged me in those aspects, like, who are you? Is this really who you are? Is this really who you're gonna be here? You know, and like challenged me to tell myself the truth, you know? And by the end time, of the, by the end of my stay with them or the, my playing time with them, I was able to tell them, yes, this is who I am. This is what I wanted to be. This is what I strove to be. And this is what I'm gonna continue to be. And uh, it took me, you know, you know, two, three years in the big leagues, but uh, it also took being around specific people, individuals, teammates, uh, watching them work, again, the way they carried themselves, the way they spoke and treated others, uh, spoke to and treated others. Uh, I mean, the way they made me feel visible, it's what I want to make these young know, bucks feel visible too. It's a great accomplishment to make to the big leagues. It's an even greater accomplishment to establish yourself and stay. You know, it's two and a half, three years. It's, you know, the league average, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, kind of smoked that, you know, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of beat that a little bit. And if it weren't for those guys that I mentioned, you know, especially Javi, uh, I wouldn't have been able to, I don't know if I would have been able to like respect myself enough to tell myself the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, if they always tell me like, if someone's going to tell you the truth in this world, let it be you. At the very least, let it be you. And uh, I mean, it's helped me out. It really has. I have to grow up. I, I've had to grow up in many ways, you know, on and off the field. And, and those those uh, ideals, those concepts, helped me out a lot. No, no player in there, I don't think, has played in a World Series game. You have played in one. What is that? Can you, if somebody asks you, what is like playing and winning a World Series? You won three. I mean, how how is that the ultimate motivator? I imagine just to get back there. Uh well, I mean, there's. That's, that's the reason why we play, right? You know, we were, I'm, I'm assuming we were all kids at one point in the backyard saying Game 7, World Series, either we put ourselves in the batter's box or put ourselves in the mound, right? And uh, that that's it's kind of the ultimate goal, like that's the, the, the climax, that's the, that's the peak of it, you know? And, you know, to go down and be able to call yourself just a World Series champion, period, in any, in any sport that's, it's what we strive for, it's what we're fighting for. So, I mean, there's sacrifices, there's tears, sweat, blood, however, like all the other things that we put out there just so that we can at least get an opportunity, just for the opportunity. And then here we are with the group of guys that as a whole, wow, like we're creating our own opportunity. Those guys started from in the last couple of years on their own, you know, and then also the additions of like Suarez and Winker and, you know, Ray, like, I mean, these guys, they, they've found ways to be successful before, and now they're just here together, put it all together as a group of service. I mean, he he surprised me yesterday because, you know, the way he held court and his first meeting, my first meeting with the team and everything, like, I was not surprised by the way he held it, that there's, there's ex high expectations here and the teams that he was able to put out, the lineups he was able to put out last year, like, it's no surprise, you know. Uh, so, I, I mean, there's... I think this generation is more see it to believe it. And I know these guys maybe, you know, haven't necessarily been to the playoffs. And I know, I know there's been a, somewhat of a drought here, you know, with Mariners. So I'd like to change that. I'd like to show them, believe it. And if I got to bring my rings in, or I got to put videos of myself, because even myself, I didn't really believe it until it was, it happened. So, uh, yeah, man, just fearless. Got to go at it. Who wants it more? Who's hungry? You know, uh, at the end of the season, like, who wants to be the last one standing for reals? Most people say that they want it and they want it and they want it, but the grind takes away from that. It's a marathon of the season, you know, and the grind takes away from that. So I think the way I'm, I feel that I can challenge these guys and throw some concepts, plant these little seeds in their heads, I think it'll, it can grow into something 
pretty nice here. Seems like you can't be afraid of the expectations of getting there. Nope, can't, you can't. Um, again, it's when we sacrifice enough as it is just to make it to the big leagues, just to be here every day, uh, to be able to walk through those doors or sacrifice being away from our kids, our family, our loved ones and whatnot, our friends. And then also, you know, like, you know, this is a real passion of ours. We wouldn't otherwise we wouldn't be making the success those sacrifices. And uh, if we were able to come in together again and and kind of see it, go like start to see it now, picture it, not practice it, see it. Like just start to visualize it. We can't go out there and start practicing celebrating or doing this and that. No, none of that. It's literally talking to each other, seeing, expecting yourself to do well. Why? Because you understand each and each one of us individually understands the effort that we've put in to just be ready for when that phone rings. Uh, I think that's that's a big key to it. And plus, there's a lot of team unity here already. There's, I'm telling you, that meeting yesterday kind of threw me back just because it reminded it did remind me of the type of court that another, I don't mean it in a bad way, but another big-headed manager of mine, <laughs> like, like physically big-headed <laughs> manager of mine, too. Um, <laughs> That you know was able to, you know, this court that he held too, uh, and there's reasons why certain certain coaches can bring out certain you know intangibles out of you individually. And I think this guy, service, he's he's pulling the right strings here right now so far that I've seen, and there's reason, there's real good reason to be excited about this squad. Are you, ready? Are you game ready? I know you're 39. Yeah, you're game ready. You can go. Oh out yeah, now. I'm. I got a bullpen today, uh, just so that, you know, Trent and Wayne can see me. Uh, they, they just see it in person, you know, see it from from the t from the on the same team side, you know, the different seat at the table, you know. Uh, and then from there, you know, I, I would assume there's uh, just to see some hitters in live BP and then get in a the game. I would assume that I get in like two or three games before uh, this last two weeks are out, uh, just to make sure that I'm, I'm ready to rock. I mean, mentally, I'm good. Let's go, you know. Uh, but, Physically, let's let's kind of let's see what the adrenaline does to me. Uh, I'm going to be excited today. I promise. It's, it's it's odd to say that there's a there's going to be some adrenaline in the bullpen, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for that. Just just to get going. I got my 54 now here, so yeah. I'm ready. How have you evolved as a pitcher over the years? Uh well, before I used to be able to tell you that I was a power pitcher without power mm -hmm. stuff. It's just my approach. I'm extremely aggressive and foot on the gas pedal all the time. I just kind of feel like me attacking is just it's just the best way I can present myself and uh, and my stuff. I mean, I don't have overpowering stuff, but I'm pretty crafty in the same mindset. So if I can go out there and like before, like I would just go out there and just I'm just gonna gritty and grind it out, you know. And didn't necessarily have a full idea of what I was doing, but then as the years went by and watching how the game's adjusted to my style of pitching and my the way my pitches break or move or whatnot. Uh, I had to, you know, grow up in that aspect too, be a little bit more sneaky, a little bit more of a, of a crafty guy. Um, I'm not gonna overpower you, but I'm gonna come at you with everything I got. I'm, I'm not afraid. You know, I, I do respect every hitter, of course. I mean, it only takes one swing, right? And, and it can be from number zero to number 99. They can do it, it doesn't matter, you know, so. Uh, it, uh, I think it's it's just more respect for the game. I think this is kind of how I've changed throughout my my career, uh, my adjustments that I've had to make. It's been more uh, on the savvy end of things, just try to make sure that I'm not necessarily a step ahead, but I'm aware who's in the box, strengths, weaknesses, you know, where their hand positions are, where they where they stand in the box, if they're up front, up far back, or on the plate or on the plate. You know, good breaking ball hitters, not so great breaking ball hitters, uh, guys that can handle the fastball, but I mean, my sneaky 85, you know, <laughs> can you handle mine, you know, that type of stuff, you know, so uh, it's just, again, self-knowledge, understanding the way my pitchers move and, and when and where and how they've been effective, uh, being able to manipulate my pitches also. Uh, people can throw you. Oh, people can tell you. Oh, he's throwing. He'll he'll throw you twelve sliders in a row. I'm like, yeah, but ask ask the hitter. Which how many of them are the same one? In a row? <laughs> you know. So uh, I've had to adjust in those aspects. Yeah. Had to grow up a little bit. You know, straight up. Munoz was pretty cool about giving you fifty four. Yeah, yeah. It'll cost me a couple little things here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 
and then necessarily sign a contract that Mr. Ray did, you know, to get his number from, uh, what was it, Ms. Woods? Ms. Woods? Yeah. Ms. Savage. Ms. Savage, Ms. Savage, sorry, I didn't put your dad on the team name on Ms. Ms. We'll just leave that Ms. Then. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't sign the contract that he signed, but uh, it's still going to be a pretty nice gift that I'm going to give him. Uh, it's a kid that I've known for a long time now, too, you know, from academies. You know, his days in the academies down in Mexico and stuff like that, and I've been partaking in those for quite a while now. So uh, it's it's, it's kind of cool to be together with him and I. We, we were just like, it's like I'd been with him, you know, the last 10 years already. You know, I've, I've known him for a while, but yeah, we got along really, really well. We were talking about it yesterday, and he was just so bashful about it. He was just so, like, shy, like, oh, no, it's just whatever you want, like, whatever you want to give me. I'm not on anything specifically. So I've got some ideas, and I'm sure he'll he'll let everybody know once once those gifts arrive. Does he work for you? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'd, I'd like to... I mean, that'd, that'd be pretty cool if he came out and he said, hey, man, that's a number because you wear it out. But maybe he does it because there's some other Mexicans that have worn that same number as well. Jaime Garcia, uh, um, Jorge De La Rosa wore it a while before, um, Roberto Suna, myself, you know, so we, there's quite a few guys that have worn 54 before that are on the Mexican side of things. So I'd assume that it'd probably be more of that than me individually. <laughs> Sergio, we're looking for a lot of big moments this year. What's what's it been like for you pitching in so many big moments in your career? Um, it's it's really it's been really gratifying. Uh, it's humbling but gratifying at the same time. Uh, gratifying because it's if my team didn't believe in me enough and I hadn't earned their respect <coughs> enough, I wouldn't be in those situations. They wouldn't be counting on me for those situations. So I take a lot of pride in being one of the guys. You know. Um, and it's part of what's helped me enter these situations and uh, outings, those somewhat important outings, like the, to to not be afraid of them, to go in there confidently and uh, to go in there with conviction. You know, it, it, the way my teammates have throughout the years have expressed, you know, I wouldn't say admiration, but more of respect, their respects for me, than uh, their support, their belief in me, their faith in me. Uh, it's it's very empowering. It's 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 helped me out a tremendous amount. Uh, I'll be honest, you know, and go back to 2012 when I got first opportunity to close games. You know, Brian Wilson had just blown out his elbow for a second time, and I ain't gonna lie, I was scared to play Red Batman. I was Robin the whole time, and I was kind of <laughs> being Robin, you know. And uh, uh, once he got hurt, it I, it did scare me a little bit because I, I I didn't know if I could do it, uh, but my teammates sure as heck did. The way they talk about me, they, they still say, hey, you know, we used to play seven inning games. You know, we had Romo and Wilson, but now now we, we still play eight inning games now. You know, we got Romo still at the back end, that type of stuff. And the way they're on top of, you know, and like on top of the dugout and supporting me and pushing that. And, uh, and then I've, I've kind of found that, that same support everywhere I've gone. And uh, if it's been earned or not, you know, I, uh, it's been very, very empowering. Uh, and I've used that. To, to my benefit, um, again, to, to go in there with conviction. And I think that's the key word is con to go in there convicted. Uh, I think that's the, that's the separator. Uh, so again, I've got credit to my, a lot of my teammates for you know, guys like Javi Lopez and you know, those guys that they, they saw something in me from a long time ago and uh, I had to see it for myself. And once I did, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for their, you know, them being in my corner uh, and I'm just trying to pass the torch at this point. Um, I want to win, of course, and I know I can still I, I can still contribute on the mound. But I'm also aware that uh, with the help that I got from my veterans, I know I I can bring some value off the field also. Absolutely.